ARAP, I think, has served a very, very effective role in Washington, D.C. And by the fact that other cities have copied this model nationally, you should care because to have a great society, you need a diverse society. And that needs to happen in all aspects of our economy. That includes not only our schools, that includes our businesses. And if you look at wealth creation around our nation, around the world, a lot of it starts in real estate. And what we really had in mind as the founders of ARAP is creating this opportunity for minorities, specifically African Americans, to get involved in real estate and have an opportunity for wealth creation. The creation of AARP is really a, a dynamic decision, not only by myself, but several people here in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, I had a job as a asset manager with LaSalle Partners, working with quite a few of the owners around town. And as I went out to um, have meetings with the owners, there were not many other African Americans that I had an opportunity to interact with. So sensing that and having the opportunity to at least try to get a handful of people together, um, we got together and said, why don't we get together for a group to see if we can not only find out who is in commercial real estate in Washington, D.C. area, but also perhaps encourage others to get involved. My greatest achievement in real estate has been, as an architect, to contribute to Washington, D.C.'s culture. And some of the projects that we've done actually extend beyond the D.C. Um, region. So for instance, Howard Theater is actually older than the Apollo Theater, and it was purpose-built for an African-American um, performances and um, clientele. So that extends beyond the D.C. region. And I think that's probably our greatest project uh, where uh, the client, uh, meaning Ellis Development, the city also as partnership in this project, that we all came together and made something that was bigger than a place that is simply a performance venue, but it has a real mark in that neighborhood and has been a great catalyst for the regeneration of that neighborhood. Another project we worked on that also has a theme that relates to African American history is the new student center for the University of District of Columbia. I attended the University of District of Columbia back when it was originally called Washington Technical Institute, combined with DC teachers in Federal City College. So being able to circle back around after 40 years of first entering the university, uh, this gave me an opportunity to give back to a place that gave me my start, my academic uh, career. The new student center gives UDC, our flagship university, the opportunity to do that. It reaches out now closer, it starts to uh, embrace the streetscape along Connecticut Avenue. The new student center for the University of District of Columbia will also be a great urban marker along Connecticut Avenue. It's one of the few places along Connecticut Avenue where the major transit hubs occur. Metro is there. The bus stations are there to sort of transfer uh, along Connecticut Avenue. But it really embraces the community and it's a new gateway and a new face for the University of the District of Columbia. I think if I was to pick one trait that allowed me to have real estate success, it would be tenacity. You know, real estate can be a frustrating business. It's a long-term business, there are ups and downs. And really, you just got to hang in there and keep going at it. If one thing doesn't work, you gotta try something else. And so it's really tenacity, hanging in there, going for it again and again and again until you get it right. When people think of significant projects we've been involved in, they think of some of the more, you know, glamorous ones like City Vista, City Center, uh, the work that I've done personally in Anacostia Waterfront. But to me, the greatest impact we've had is in the Georgia Avenue area. This was an area that was really down and out when we first got there. We built affordable housing there. We built high-end boutique condos. We built exciting loft condominiums. We brought a grocery store, a restaurant, a charter school, local retail establishments. And it's really an area that, when we first there, was, was pretty pioneering. No one else was there. And so really, that's a part of my career that I'm most proud of. The thing that's had the most impact on my career has been the work that I've done in Noma. Uh, as a native Washingtonian, I remember uh, traveling in that area every morning on the subway, uh, 
coming to and from Union Station. And I remember uh, looking at that area and thinking that it could be so much more than what it was then. Uh, it was close to the Capitol and the ability to have a role in recreating and crafting and helping that area to achieve what it has uh, from attracting the metro station to bringing in the retail amenities to uh, doing almost two million square feet of Department of Justice leases and the Internal Revenue Service and all of the other impacts that the federal government has had on that uh, uh, area has been the highlight of my career and it's what I have been most proud of thus far. Hopefully there'll be a lot more to come. If I think back, I did have a vision when I started this company and it was a vision of having a major impact in Washington, D.C. in terms of its real estate and its growth. And I can say today as a, your own homegrown District of Columbia company that we have helped change the face of Washington. And I'm so honored that we've been able to be a part of such great projects that we have been able to see this change in D.C. Starting with the National Mall, where we we're working on the African American Museum. We were the design builders for the Martin Luther King Memorial on the National Mall. And the um, upgrades and renovations to the Lincoln and Jefferson Memorials, we had a hand in. If I move downtown and I look at our sports and entertainment, how great it is that we were a part of the Washington Convention Center and the Nationals Ballpark. And then, um, the D.C. Public Schools program has been amazing. It touches every single part of this city. And for us to be a part of that, enhancing the lives and, it's, and um, inspiring and spurring economic development around these schools and all these projects has truly been um, enlightening and inspirational. It has to have been one of the great things we've ever, I've ever done in my life. When I look back on my real estate career, I think about leadership as the number one driver of why we have been successful over the years. When I think of leadership, I think of many other traits as well, tenacity, perseverance. But in each one of those situations, someone had to stand up. Someone had to say, we want to make a difference. And I did that when I came back to Washington, D.C. in 1998 and started my company here, primarily because when I wanted to bring those leadership skills to majority firms, which I interviewed with all, and it provided my vision that I wanted to work in neighborhoods, they all said, no thank you. So there was a need, there was a niche, and I brought my skills to the table and built a team that was able to really change environments and change how people thought about where they lived and the places that they could thrive in. And for us, Creating extraordinary places is what we're all about. We want to make sure that places are exciting, safe, invigorating. And with that, they can grow on their own. And we just set the backdrop. I think the relationship brokering was extremely important. I came to the council uh, in 1979 because I wanted to help the city recover from the effects of the riots of 1968. Uh, and I spent a good bit of my time relationship brokering, make, making sure that I understood each of the neighborhoods, the people who were in them, the brokers who were servicing them, the council members who were voting on things like the Convention Center and the Verizon Center uh, and business improvement districts. So it was very important to know the agendas and the preferences and the uh, expected outcomes from the work that I was doing to try to help revitalize the city after the riots. And the city indeed uh, has been revitalized and in many ways, I think we laid the foundation for the economic recovery of Washington, D.C. AREP has influenced my career in an enormous way. It's provided a foundation. It was people who there were other women in the group and you don't know how important that was to go somewhere and I could speak to other women about the challenges of being in the, in the industry, about the men I was meeting who was like, who are you? Why are you even in this business? So I could say being at AREP and being able to speak with other women was just 
incredible. It was an incredible experience. Thank you. It took perseverance to bring busboys and poets, a bank, a hardware store, and other neighborhood serving retail to the City Vista project at 5th and K back in 2007. It also took perseverance to bring neighborhood serving retail across the river to Anacostia at the Shops at Park Village project. After almost three years of meeting with the folks at IHOP, I was successfully, I successfully brought an IHOP franchise to that project, the first sit-down restaurant across the river in over 25 years. I try not to give advice. Uh, my wife tells me I shouldn't do that and uh, she doesn't live since when I do. But in terms of emerging leaders in real estate, I think it's very important that you focus on qualities. And I've got six qualities that I think anyone should do. It's not only applicable to real estate, but it's applicable to anyone out there. And the first one is work on your interpersonal skills. That means you need to be educated, knowledgeable of what's going on in life so that you can go to the uh, event, go to the party, and you can take a conversation with the president as well as the janitor in the room. The second thing is your analytical skills. Continue to uh, improve those skills no matter how old you get. The next thing is certainly thinking about leadership, and leadership is so important. That ability to mobilize a group to accomplish a common goal. Your communication skills are critically important, and for those young people out there, that not only means you're writing, you're speaking, but also the ability to listen. That's the one we sometimes don't focus on. It's very important, and I've had the opportunity to start a couple of companies, to have an entrepreneurship or risk-taking part of you. Uh, you can certainly stay down the middle of the road, but taking a risk doesn't mean that you do things without possible mitigants in place, but you certainly have to take a risk to get a reward. And last but not least, it's certainly having what I call passion about what it is that you want to do.